Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. This podcast is about all things outdoor photography, including landscapes, wildlife, macro, and more. The show features two talented photographers, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, who bring their different experiences in photography to the podcast. The show is released weekly every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. In today's episode, Henry and Ryan meet in person for the first time ever. They spend a whole day together photographing birds and landscapes at various parks and trails, and to end the day, they record a short video episode that recount the highlights from their time together. Welcome back to episode 55 of the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. Mm -hmm. And today we're out in the field for the first time. Yeah, first in the uh, field episode recording, yeah. so something different, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so Yeah. Fun fact: We never actually met before. This is the first time. First day, at least. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we've been out shooting all day, and it's been it's been a lot yep. a lot of fun. So what is it? It's we started at 8 a.m. and now it's like 4 p.m. So yeah, basically. Good yeah. eight hours yeah. of shooting yeah. here. So mm -hmm. yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. So I guess we're just gonna talk about basically about yeah. our day. Uh huh. So, so you want to just go step by step here? Sure, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. So um, Henry and I met at a place called Old Reed Park uh, mm -hmm. in Springfield, Ohio. Um, he's up here in Ohio for a time right now, and. So yeah, we met at 8 a.m. there. Um, it was really like foggy, kind of misty conditions. There's like some light rain drizzle, misty whatever weather and uh, precipitation. And uh, yeah, so we're just out photographing mainly waterfowl to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, something a little bit different. Um, yep. And we're mainly doing like what hooded merganser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gadwell, hooded merganser, yeah. ton of Canada geese, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, different kinds of uh, mallards, you know, typical mallards, but there's also some domestic uh, kind of like types mm -hmm. and hybrids. Um, and mainly just, yeah, mainly those to start with, um, yeah. just trying to get close to them as much mm -hmm. as we can, uh, because it's like a fishing lake pond. Mm -hmm. Um, there's all these different like islands and stuff you can go on to break away and get closer to the water, the deeper, uh, ends of the water. And, uh, just trying to get real close to those ducks and everything, um, which is really tricky as mm -hmm. you can imagine. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the lake was, old Reed Lake was pretty good. Um, it was pretty far away. We got as close as possible, obviously, but, uh. We did some small and frame stuff with like tree reflections. I think they worked pretty well, and uh, that was just kind of giving us into it. Uh, you know, the day kind of increased from there, uh, but it was good. I hadn't seen a hood and berganser in probably, probably let's see, probably about a month. So it was good to see those again. Mm -hmm. Gadwell's cool. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it was a lot of fun. Um, and then there's also it's kind of like a part of Old Reed, but it's like it's, it has a separate name to it. It's called uh, Kirby Preserve, and it's basically a meadow kind of prairie land. Um, mm -hmm. So we did a little hike through that, or around it, really. Um, just seeing mainly song sparrows and hearing them. Um, I tried some fishing uh, techniques on them, and nothing really came about too much. At least that was cooperative to our cameras, that mm -hmm. is. Um, but beyond that, um, we started going around the uh, Buck Creek, around it. Um, there's a little meandering trail. Yep. Um, it's almost like repairing mm -hmm. kind of habitat. And uh, that's where we really got some luck with uh, Belt of Kingfisher, mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, so I will say earlier we actually, if you remember, we had some luck with a kingfisher, kind of like small in frame, yeah. over the lake at Old Reed Park. Um, but yeah, when we went on that Buck tree, Creek Trail, uh, a kingfisher flew in right by us. Like It was just a pretty small creek, and he was just right across that creek. Um, I think he was in three different perches, um, if I remember correctly. It, it was yeah. mainly three, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I think the second one was the best. He was over some red berries and kind of a curved tree. And we were in different spots, too, so we got slightly different angles. Um, I thought that was an otter, actually. That was just wood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish we could show you guys. Uh, that's just part of the shooting out here. Um, Where's my phone at? <laughs> <laughs> so, that looks so much like an otter. Imagine that was. I know, right? Uh, yeah, um, but, uh, yeah, we worked with that kingfisher for about 30 minutes. I was really hoping to get a flight shot, uh, but he just stayed there. He wouldn't move. Even when I stood up, he stayed there. Uh, he's probably still there today, honestly. But uh, yeah, honestly, he was very cooperative. No noises, which is weird for a kingfisher. Um, and we got some great shots, honestly. Thinking back to it, um, it was just pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it really taught me um, once again, or reminded me that is about like uh, birds in particular, creatures of habit. Like so, this kingfisher, actually the multiple kingfishers we saw, um, they all perch on the same spots. I've mm -hmm. noticed. They'll go to the same, you know, telephone pole or, you know, same tree branch against the creek. Like, it was really neat to see that kind of, like, behavior, I guess. And it made it, photographing them a lot easier, I think, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and along the way there, too, kind of, like, throughout that old Reed Park, Buck Creek area, we got a bunch of kind of, like, little tree birds. Um, mm -hmm. We saw some kinglets. Oh, yeah. um, what else? We saw um, 
various woodpeckers, downies, yeah. red mm-hmm. bellies. Um, I heard some chickadees. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard one Carolina I think I got wren. The chickadee shot. Oh really? So yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yellow roan warbler, which mm-hmm. you know it sticks around for a long time. It's a very hardy uh, warbler species yep. in here in Ohio, mm-hmm. at least. Um, so got yeah. a couple of those, I think, on the same tree and everything. And on the way out too, after kind of the the Kingfisher Trail, we played with some gulls a little bit, did some tested some bird and flight stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a new camera recently, so I was kind of testing the autofocus on that. Um, and the Kingfisher, I think, showed up again too on a tree. Yeah, Actually, something like that. Yeah, at he, least. he just yeah. kept showing up. I think this was a different one. I think we saw two different kingfishers, uh, but he yeah. came back. So it's hard to keep track, but yeah, yeah I think it was about that many or something like that. So, yeah, um, yeah no, it was, it was great. It was great at Old Reed. Um, I did an eBird checklist for both of us, and I think we clocked in about seventeen species. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, for winter, it's pretty good. I would say, um, you know, a couple of surprises there and um, stuff that like kinglets, the the warbler in particular, was pretty cool to see <laughs> uh, close up. Even did you um, get any shots of the warbler? Not anything really salvageable. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like quick, overexposed sky, just yeah. like a dock shot, basically, mm-hmm. um, which is all I was going for. Just trying to mm-hmm. simply identify it, really. But I mean, nothing beyond that. Yeah. Um, I did not, um, but I, I got a good shot of a kinglet. I think kind of silhouetted with some leaves mm-hmm. um, that I really like. So right. Um, once I edit that, we'll see. But I think that's pretty good. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else to add that we'll read? About that? Uh, I think it's just a really cool location. Uh, we were talking, um, All right. we definitely need to go back in spring or summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan's been there before and it's, you know, it's the beautiful flowers and stuff. So, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I need to go there more, that is. But yeah, yeah, that was your first visit, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, but it wasn't too far from me, so that was nice. It's very convenient. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's a great location. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, so, after that, we spent probably a good solid couple hours there, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, maybe two and a half, three hours. Yeah, yeah. Some, something like that, at least yeah. just doing wildlife exclusively, birds. Uh-huh. Um, then we moved uh, across the street quite literally to uh, Buck Creek State Park, mm-hmm. um, also in Springfield, of course. And uh, so, at th- that point, we focused essentially on the lake. Um, but, but as we both got out of our cars next to the lake, uh, we noticed there's a particular curious looking bird. And um, we both really just like focused in on it with binoculars and everything. Um, at this point, I had my spotting scope with me on a tripod, and uh, I was actually a northern mockingbird. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Yeah. Um, so he was kind of we were right by the lake, so there was some brush along the lake, and he was first there. So we we were, like you said, we were confused at first, and then we got different many different shots. Like we started very far away, we started moving in. Um, I think we got like five different areas, kind of. Mm-hmm. And it captured um, our favorite. I think both of our favorite parts was when he got a pyre with the sky behind him. We got some high key shots. Yeah. Um, kind of put that shutter up or put that ISO up. Mm-hmm. Um, got some cool branches there too. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, that's a bird that's like it's not super rare, but mm-hmm. like in winter I do see him quite a bit here in Ohio. So I was like, this is a cool one to yeah, see. It's yeah, it's fun. Because yeah. I just thought it was like a typical, mm-hmm. I don't know, a robin or something different mm-hmm. or something more common, I guess. But. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool bird nonetheless. Very mm. neat. It's definitely postable for me, the shot I got. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that that, uh, that too, yeah. I uh, think I got a few close-ups because yep. it's cool to see the improvement as you go along. Like your earliest shots of a bird, you know, they're very far away. I'm saying like a specific session like this. Mm. And then like the ones that we took yeah. at the very end before uh-huh. it surely flew away. It's we were like, super close. Yeah, it was, it was really mm. close up at least, which is yeah. neat. Um, um, yeah. Pretty crazy. It, it was fun to photograph it. I know it's pretty common, but in Louisville, I've never seen a mockingbird. Oh, really? The only other time I've seen one is all the way in San Francisco, California. So. <laughs> Same species, actually, but um, yeah, yeah. it's crazy to see it again. So, mm. yeah, we did not get to see it mocking any other birds, but yeah, no, no um, mimicry or anything. No sounds, Cause, yeah, because they're, they're actually some very vocal birds. You mm-hmm. know, when they really get to it and yep. stuff, and they'll any sound they'll hear, they'll try to mimic it, which is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, and then we, uh, what do we do after that? We just, well, well, we're not there yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we started walking along the beach. No, wait, no, 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 no. before that. Okay, so uh, shout out to uh, Dave and Terry Norris. Uh-huh. Um, they're locals here in Clark uh-huh. County. They're amazing. Check out their page. Yeah, they, they do great work. Uh, they post on, like, Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple that they both photograph wildlife mainly mm-hmm. um, and some landscapes and stuff in between. Um, but they came out of their cars, and I, I quite feel he didn't recognize them. Well, don't tell them. But yeah, but they got out and were asking what we were shooting, and we said a mockingbird. And they're like, "Well, we were actually here to look at uh, some snowy owl that was mm-hmm. reported earlier." And like, it was funny because you and I were like, we "We're going to go in this other section of the trail." And I was like, "Well, Henry, we got to uh-huh. slot this in our schedule. Yeah. All right, let's go." I mean, I was just yeah. like, I was like, nothing else mattered. I was quite like, at that uh, point. "Let's get some sparrows in this field in the snowy owl." Yeah. 
we're, we're yeah, yeah. We're I was just like, I don't know if we can fit that in. Oh, it just threw that way. We threw away our plans. Yep. Whatever it was didn't mm-hmm. matter. Um, and so and we, yeah, I we, mean, did you expect to see anything? I'm not saying we did see anything, but did you expect to see anything? Like a snowy owl? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. I well, kind of, I have to, you know. I, wishful uh, thinking. I mean, yeah, uh-huh. like, I was like, I was hoping, of course, uh-huh. or, you know, I hoped for it, but like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of like, no, you know, why would it be of, like, uh-huh. this place, this close to where I live? Yeah, and I mean, uh, I was, the Mockingbird, I was happy with that. That was kind of, like, the highlight of my day so far, getting these frame-filling oh, shots yeah. of a Mockingbird. Um, so, spoiled it. You know, I, we saw it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> we saw the snowing out. But let's let's tell the story first, right? Uh, so, so we're going through, yeah. Dave, um, we're walking along, just, just chit-chatting, basically, um, and they're telling us about, like, where they might see it and everything and all that. Um, and so we walked the length of the beach, which is pretty far you know, long standing beach or whatever, up to some like rip rat basically that's just rock on against uh, like the bridge that basically crosses where the lake is. We were up high at this point though, if you remember. Yeah, we're on yeah, the, yeah okay. Yeah, we're yeah. on the like a grassy yeah. hill, but yeah, we're up top on the beach looking mm-hmm. o- over it basically. And I, I thought it was great. We were just kinda exchanging stories because I, I don't get to be with other photographers often, so it was great to kinda yeah, it was talk great. about stories. It's great and, to yeah. get you in mm-hmm. front of some more, especially some that are really talented like mm-hmm. they are and stuff. Um, so that was cool. Um, yeah, so we're just walking the length of it. We're all just looking through our binoculars and mm-hmm. you know, my spying scope and all that stuff, and just chit chatting about you know gear and mm-hmm. about the owl itself. Yeah, and so like else. Um, it was kind of hard because of these rocks, some of them were white. So we literally thought every ten seconds, oh, it's a snowy owl, it's a snowy owl. <laughs> and I remember there's this one plastic bag by the highway, and we were white, like dead black, set, yeah. this is a snowy owl. Yeah. It wasn't. It was just a plastic bag. I so. still think it yeah. was. Uh-huh. That was probably the same one. Uh-huh. But. Not like you know. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. um, they know at this point. So. Yeah, they know. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we're, we're walking the length of it, and then we started noticing uh, some people across the, in, the entire lake mm-hmm. there, um, just like checking out, and they had big telephone lenses yeah. and everything too. At the visitor center. Yeah, on the opposite yeah. end of the lake. So. I think that's where the e bird alert was. There was so the guys that came to us originally, they had seen it there that original day, or that same day, and got right. in some shots um, at that visitor center. Um, so I think they e-birded it, and, and that obviously brought a lot of people over there. Right. But it was just us four on our side, so it was pretty crazy to zoom across. And I was like, I'll be so mad if they get a snowy owl and we don't. And then, like, you know, we end up getting it. So, uh, right, yeah. Right. And we, we were up there for a while, maybe 30 minutes of scoping and kind of zooming in, trying to find things. And all we saw was a guy in a blind hunting ducks unsuccessfully uh, yeah. from that point. Um, he had so, about... I think yeah. it was like a floating, it was uh-huh. a boat or something, but it looked like a floating blind mm-hmm. from where it was, like a big, like bulbous looking thing floating out of the water next yeah. to a, a peninsula. And there was about 30 something decoys he had stringed about, mm-hmm. like right in front of it. And he was, we could hear the, clearly hear the duck calls, you know, just going off from it. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah. And then basically when all four of us just about gave up, uh, we started walking our way back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Terry and Dave took the high ground, and I was like, hey, Henry, you want to take the, the mm-hmm. beach? And so we stay down at that lower level, and we're walking along, and there's a like a boat sign because there's several signs dotting like this beach, and the farthest one at the end before we go off to the parking lot up the hill again, um, there's this like white thing. I, 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 so you know, yeah, <laughs> so I originally I said I bet that's a snowy owl, and I kind of said it half jokingly because yeah. it was another white <laughs> thing. I thought it was a plastic bag, mm-hmm. and Ryan said no way, no way. And, at first, you didn't even look through your spotting scope. And you're like, "Oh, maybe I'll check." It looks through the spotting scope. It looks, yeah, it looks it takes a second. It's not. It wasn't instant. You know, like yeah, you yeah. didn't instantly recognize it. Yeah. And it was funny though. It was hilarious. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was just like, "No, you're full of it." And then I'm like looking through, and I'm like, "Oh uh, crap!" I was uh, like, "This is it." Yeah, <laughs> I was just like, "Oh my god!" The moment, just kind of reliving it. it it's a funny yeah. story, I think, when you just all but given up and you're walking uh-huh. back, and that's why they say never pack your camera before you leave the mm-hmm. location. And I'm glad we went back a different way because right, we went up high, and if if we had, hadn't come back on the beach, we may have still seen it, but there's a chance you know you miss it. So yeah, true. Yeah, we wouldn't be really looking for it because uh-huh. like on the, the the beach level, the beach side of it, like we we were walking straight towards it. Like mm-hmm. it was basically eye level with us. So I mean, like we'd be walking past it if we kept going straight. And we're just not totally oblivious to it, let's say. Yeah. Like, we would not see it. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, we did all that. And, um, gosh, so and I flagged down Terry and Dave because they're up top. And they're looking at us about the same, like, distance we were up the hill. And I'm just like, you know, I'm like, coming down here. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like, pointing the direction. Yeah. Trying to, like, mouth my words, I guess. And we were, we were lucky. We both did have our full gear. Like, you had your long lens. Mm-hmm. I had my long lens. I had my tripod. I, I had a tripod with yeah, me. Yeah, tripod. I was like, thank uh-huh. you. I had some stability. Uh-huh. Yes. It was... 
I'd be so bummed if I had to run back the car. Cause uh -huh. Holding that handheld that still and waiting for it to turn its head to like the right angle and stuff would just yeah. It would take longer, of course, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, we started. So we were par pretty much parallel with him on the beach, on the same level. I'm gonna be honest; those first shots weren't great, which is fine. You know, no, it was, there's just kinda, documentation. Yeah, just kind of seeing the owl, um, and I've been fine. I don't know if you would have been, but I would have been fine with just that shot, honestly. Just seeing it, yeah, just seeing it at all, I was happy with. Yeah. That was actually one of my goals for this winter, is, mm -hmm. like, to see a snowy out at all. So, Because mm -hmm. this is a life for both of us. Yeah. And, like, so, that that alone, yeah, like, I agree. Like, that alone was enough. The shots, looking back, are terrible compared to, like, what we got later on, mm -hmm. as we kind of kept hunkering down and focusing on, I guess, more mm -hmm. on the bird. But. I mean, it was pretty much a white couple of pixels at that point. Like Yeah, it was some like, yeah, chromatic uh, aberration. I think it was, like, yeah. overexposed in most of them, and uh, it was just on this thin little signpost, and, like... Like, you could crop it, but it wouldn't even look that good, probably. Yeah, so. mine were blurring yeah. out of focus. I did do terrible. some video there, though, that I think that was kind of a bit better medium for that, but... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, we... So, no, we did this ethically. You know, we were... we uh, Terry is a professional, um, and she knows how to approach owls safely, and we you know, asked her what the safe distance was, so she kind of showed us where we could go safely. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved up a bit. Um, that still wasn't too close, but I think that kind of puddle spot, that got a lot better, right? Like, kind of closer up there. Yeah, yeah. so we basically went up the hill. Uh, we After we shot them down at the eye level mm -hmm. at the beach or whatever, uh, we met them both uphill and uh, we walked along basically to this, uh, like, restroom shelter and uh, basically used that as cover, um, just staying on the concrete base of it. And uh, that's where we got our best shots, because we're looking top down um, as it overlooked the, the lake water, um, we got some of the beach, and then also some of the green grass. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like three different solid color and elements going on there, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of both of our images. Um, but that top down view really, really helped, I think. Mm -hmm. And we're also facing the, uh, the, the, the sign as well. Mm -hmm. So you actually got well, to yeah, see the sign so, with it, so that was perched on. Um, that's actually... We actually, we shot up, level, if I'm remembering correctly, sorry, we shot kind of sideways first. We weren't straight on at first. Yeah, we were kind of like shooting uh -huh. as we went, uh -huh. walking closer to it, I think. Uh -huh. And I was like, trying the eye level there. It didn't quite work out, but then we saw them at this porta potty or outhouse thingy yeah. thing. Um, and yeah, we went there, and that that was the magic, right? So <laughs> you went right, I went left, and I think both were pretty much equal. Yeah, we were Slightly on separate, yeah. separate uh -huh. sides or walls of uh -huh. like the restroom thing. It was hilarious. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, we just took different sides, and uh, yeah, just took a bunch of photos of it basically. And we both took footage of it, you know, just from our tripods. Mm -hmm. And so you want you want to talk about your approach you took there, and then I'll kind of talk about my unique. Thing I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yours is more unique. I don't know. I just took some photos of it. I don't know what else to say. Um, I don't remember the settings off the top of my head. Um, as we're recording this, I haven't even edited them. They look great, though, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, just basically getting eye level. Um, I incorporate some foreground blur into it um, with like the green grass, so it's just blurring this nice, like, thin slit against the bottom part of the frame there. Um, but most of them are, you know, it's just tack sharp, just simple focusing on it. Um, lots of horizontals with rule of thirds, so I'll, I'll center on like the right or left of it, and um, yeah, just as it's perched on the sign, um, not to like jump, sh uh, go faster in the process here, but it did fall down, I guess, to the beach, mm -hmm. like just kind of swoop down. I almost yeah. thought it was just going to fly away, I wasn't sure, but it definitely just fell off the sign on its own free will and mm -hmm. just um, get down the ground level, basically. Yep. And those shots were the best, uh, probably just because it's more natural approach, I guess. Mm -hmm. At that. Yeah, there was a little bit of asphalt, but if you put it at the right angle, you really didn't see much of it. So. Right, yeah. yeah. I didn't quite mind it, honestly, either yeah. way. But, um, yeah, but I just took different shots from that. Um, just, you know, on my tripod, get some video on there. Um, about less than about half my height, we'll say. And then I started doing some, like, laying flat on the ground um, and just getting some much more, you know, eye-level perspectives, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it just basically had its head on a swivel and just turning and moving around it yeah. wasn't it didn't seem undeterred by anyone's presence um at mm -hmm. least actively i'll say because it was getting surrounded by quite a few of us um, not just the four of us um, as more people showed up from the other side yeah of the it lake. was funny you could see the visitor center empty out as they all came over yeah and all these cars yeah. coming over and they filled yeah. they not filled up the parking lot but like there's definitely like at least 10 plus more cars yeah. it's by, crazy. by the time we left i'll say uh, it's crazy yeah. how social media has changed that because you know yeah snowy owls used to be probably much more elusive before things like ebird and instagram so <laughs> yeah yeah that's very true mm -hmm. um so yeah and i'm, I'm fortunate that we've got we caught on to this one early on because like if it was like one that drew crowds already i'd be so bummed mm -hmm. i'd be excited to see one finally if that was the case but like i'd be bummed just seeing how 
might be stressed out or just mm-hmm. just just I don't know, disappointed a little bit that people would just draw the crowds to it. Yeah. Even though we might be contributing to it if we were there. Uh-huh. And I think even with the crowds, it wasn't too disturbed. And that may have been the original reason that it flew to the ground, I'm not sure. But it really wasn't that many people. I think it was maybe three birders and like four photographers besides us. Right. So it wasn't too yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, and it, it was funny. Um, so in the photography wildlife specifically community, um, there's kind of a movement against location sharing. Yeah. And yeah. he self-reported himself. He sat on a sign that said Buck Creek State Park. So I may, I probably am not going to post those. I, I haven't decided. But wait a few months, I uh-huh. think, is what they say yeah. for raptors, especially uh-huh. owls in particular. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait a few months until like times pass. So. Yeah. But so that's just what I've heard. Those asphalt ones, I probably will post pretty soon. But those sign ones, I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. Yeah. But it was yeah. funny, just kind of. It's amazing. Usually, we're yeah. the ones doing it, and he did it to himself. So literally on this uh-huh. sign, in the first uh-huh. line, you read Buck Creek State Park, uh-huh. and it has like all this like about uh-huh. diving and stuff because it's the beach. I don't know if you read down on the sign too, but somebody spray painted a bunch of like dirty words on there yeah. and stuff and yeah so I know, I know me and Terry joked about uh, like using a smudge tool on like Photoshop and like smudging uh-huh. up Buck Creek State Park or something you know I mean blurring it out or cloning uh, it out making it a white log or something or yeah a exactly log or maybe oh yeah uh, <laughs> something yeah. like that filling yeah. it in but yeah uh, yeah that was, that was just I mean I don't know what else to say it was just a cool moment um, for anyone that hasn't seen a snowy owl and would like to I would say go drive as far as you can try and Try and be determined to see it. It's it's a beautiful bird, nonetheless, and uh, it was really cool to see it, finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm really glad. I think that's life for 175 for me. Wow. So, which is cool. And it's a great way to end 2021, mm-hmm. which is awesome. So I think I, it's uh, 91 for me. So. Definitely the best life bird to end mm-hmm. a year on, I would say. So, um, pretty cool. And plus one this close to where I live, too, locally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. And they don't get them really as much in Kentucky, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't, I've don't. i never seen a report for one in my area, at least. Right. So I've got, like, rare bird alert on, too. So Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they're a big celebrity mm-hmm. up here for a good reason, yep. I'd say. Michigan um, a lot. Snowy owls, but oh, yeah. not in Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It, it's, I think this, this year might be more of, like, a super eruption or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. So, like, they might be traveling a little bit more down south. Because some years they don't really come around this part of Ohio at all. Oh, like, wow. Like the southern end, I'll say. Like, yeah, I, I it's mean, hard, I, it's hard pressed. But this year, I've been hearing quite a lot of reports and seeing photos of them popping mm-hmm. up. Like even at, uh, down far south of Cincinnati, I would say. Mm-hmm. Didn't Terry uh, say that she hadn't seen one since 2017? She uh, said that. Well, no, she just saw this one or this well, morning. Well, besides that, yeah. Oh, okay. I think 2017 was the last time. Maybe. Last one she, I, no, 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 last one she saw at Buck Creek. This year? No, just in general. Oh, last okay. time she saw a snowy at Buck Creek was 2017. Oh, okay. Because remember, she said she saw one and towards Columbus mm-hmm. just like a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, she yeah. She saw yeah. it for 10 minutes. Uh-huh. I may not have been there during that part. I may have been. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of, I mean, it's a rare bird. I mean, even somebody yeah. who's out every day, they don't see it often. So, mm-hmm. yeah. You know it's important when people are coming from long ways to uh, shoot the oh, snowy yeah. owl. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely well sought after. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. Always be ethical, mm-hmm. of course. It's what we mm-hmm. both always recommend. Yep. Yeah. Um, we kept our distance, uh, uh, and you can you can work with that distance. So what I did was I uh, I got down, you know, army crawled. I, I was stay at a safe distance, and I I got foreground. So I would put my camera into the grass and get that nice green texture. I, I also incorporated a tree, kind of framing the owl. I really liked that shot, and that's when it was on the asphalt. So it was there was no sign. I used yeah. that foreground. At one point, I even crawled through a puddle to get the right framing. <laughs> and that's actually my favorite shot. So it worked out. It was freezing cold. I stayed in the puddle. I got the shot. So um, you got to get that foreground army crawl. Uh, I'm sure you got some foreground too, right? Like, that's oh, I, I, yeah. yeah, I incorporate uh-huh. a little bit of blur into mm-hmm. there or foreground just in general, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. It was just funny because Dave told me that, and like you came over and you're just like walking like this, uh-huh. and I could just see your whole like torso uh-huh. is just drenched. I was frozen. Oh yeah. yeah, I was just uh-huh. like, this is funny. But worth it. Whatever, worth it. yeah, whatever it takes, and uh, yeah, I think it worked out for what we're doing mm-hmm. here. And yeah, just just be ethical. I think there weren't really any unethical photographers there that day, so it's good to see. Hopefully, it stays that uh, way. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I can only imagine that in the next couple mm-hmm. days, this place, that mm-hmm. place, is going to be just drawing yep. a lot and, more people, and, and on a regular basis too. And that's mm-hmm. that's only if the owls in that same spot, or if it's somewhere else in the state mm-hmm. park. It might have moved 
well beyond Buck Creek. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm just fortunate we got to see this little uh-huh. moment in time here. And probably by the time this goes up, too, he'll be gone. So, if anybody's listening, don't try to chase after him unless you, you know, see other reports because he probably won't be there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. And please be ethical, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so after that, um, you know, that was our big thing of the day. I would say. I mean, it, I was just. We were both just astounded, right? Yeah, Because yeah. it's both life. We, we both didn't expect that from uh-huh. going there and just photographing a, a mockingbird, which is a cool bird, of course. Yeah. But then leaving the day, leaving uh-huh. the place of that mm-hmm. on top of it and, like, frame, almost yeah. like frame fillers, really. I think, I mean, we can both crop to make it that way. Mm-hmm. But even just including the environment and landscape around it, just, yeah, it perfect light day for it, in my opinion. Like, it just couldn't have been better. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that, we, we just the moment you know it was with amazing that, it was a big surprise not neither of us were really expecting that too mm-hmm. so yeah it was really really cool um and then you know after that we headed to these woods here um we've done some we did a video yeah. for my channel a uh, video for ryan's channel uh took some landscapes mm-hmm. macro nothing amazing but you know pretty cool shots We're just having fun yeah mm-hmm. just yeah just learning how we both shoot together and yep. you know just mm-hmm. i don't know just having more fun i guess yep doing what we both love to talk about and do mm-hmm. so um, yeah. yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Did some social media stuff as well. You know, got to let the fans know that we're shooting together. Of course, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and now we're filming this here uh, in the woods still. Uh, nice outdoor podcast. Um, I've seen some birds actually. I saw a white crowned sparrow. I don't know if you saw that, but just now? Uh, a little bit earlier. I didn't oh, okay. want to pause, but. Uh, See how Laura guy was like, uh, just now? I was like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> just grab the camera yeah. and just like go with uh-huh. it, you know? <laughs> like, oh, uh, actually, uh, we saw a dead deer carcass. That, that was new. That's, yeah. That was different. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah we, we both didn't stop take photos, really. I mean, mm-hmm. I took one on my phone, I guess. But Yeah, we think it's a coyote because nobody's hunting this land at the moment, so... Uh, yeah pretty much the only option but it was like ripped clean you mm-hmm. can see all the ribs and the bone of it but like it was like hollowed out mm-hmm. except for the head and it looked fresh and it, had mm-hmm. certain, it was like what six point buck it eyes, it's eyes were still open too I think yeah at least yeah. it had yeah the eyelids uh-huh. and everything it looked it looked fresh like mm-hmm. I don't know you could smell it too it was yeah it was kind of rancid yeah. a little uh-huh. bit yeah so but uh, not like rancid to where it you know decaying. had been out there for a while yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. fresh kill fresh yeah. kill yep uh-huh. yep and it, yeah, but it looked spread out. And there's some hairs like uh, like a foot or two away from it, mm-hmm. so it looked like something pulled it apart, like like animals, I guess, like mm-hmm. maybe a coyote. I don't know, or a bobcat, or something like that. Bobcat, bear, even <laughs> freaking uh, elk bear. out here in Ohio. I wish yeah. bison uh, here in the woods. <laughs> polar bear, uh-huh. polar bear. <laughs> you, me, uh, an yeah. eagle, bald eagle, elk, me. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, bald eagle. Uh-huh. Yeah. A that snowy, was cool. a snowy owl. Yeah. Had you ever seen that, like a dead deer like that? Yeah, I've seen animal bones out in mm-hmm. the woods and stuff, and uh, a few few skulls, like little raccoons or squirrel skulls. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty good big carcass. Like I don't think I've really seen something quite that big, and that fresh too, you know. Um, so no, I don't think so. Maybe a few skeletons, maybe here and there. But mm-hmm. how about you? Um, I've seen I've seen some bones. I've seen like a full rib cage, but never yeah. the skin on still. So it was awesome, cool thing to on, see. On topic of ethics, do you believe like do you think it's okay to take this home and stuff? Mm, if it's already dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying kill something and uh, just take its uh, like skull or skeleton. I'm saying like like I would never personally do it, but I think it's fine. Honestly, oh, okay. I don't see really the environmental impact on taking it. Necessarily. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what's your individual goal for 2022? Photography? Um, yeah, good question. That is, I want to do more videos, um, try and keep them consistent as much as I can. Um, I want to do them higher quality, though, so I'm thinking lots more, like, voiceovers and stuff to make it more a little more cinematic, maybe. Um, but, yeah, more on location, more just anything off the wall, weird stuff. Like, if I just want to try out a filmmaking technique or something, um, just be open to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, just more videos and stuff. Um, other than that, um, probably more longer extended trips, like solo camping, whether it's my car or tent, uh, hammock maybe even, um, and you know, get out early sunrise and do photography, stuff like that. So I want to do more camping in general. Cool. Um, and then, shoot, I mean, I don't know, just more photography, I think, um, which is always the goal, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and try, I'm hoping by the end of the year to probably start doing this part-time, like oh. actually like pursuing it part-time, you know, kind of distancing myself from maybe the day job. Hmm. And really trying to make this a thing. So, so would you step back on your day job to part time? Probably, yeah. yeah, like a thirty or twenty hour a week. I'm thinking, hmm. but um, that's probably gonna be another year from now. But I'm thinking by the end of maybe next year, we'll see. Hmm. Um, awesome. 
because things are, you know, with both the podcast in general, but also just my own stuff, like, I feel like things are really ramping up and growing, you know, just, uh, just everything, I guess, you know, my sales, just whatever, mm-hmm. yada, yada. Um, so, yeah, I think that's basically my goals. Yeah, just basically that. Um, so, cool. I'm looking forward to it, at least. Awesome. But, yeah. How yeah. about you? Um, well, I'm just going to, first of all, try to learn my new camera. Uh, there's a lot of settings to that one. my new camera. That one right there. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to learn you got to talk to that one when you say I'm going to try to learn you camera um, you know there's a lot of settings to it I messed up multiple times today because I have no <laughs> idea what buttons do um, but you know, it's the R5 so I'll, I'll be working with that um, kind of want to get that learned by February kind of fully um, I've got some trips I'm going to Alaska very excited for that um, cool. we'll probably do Michigan again um, also in spring in Louisville and maybe up here in Ohio I really want to hit the warbler season hard Doing already doing habitat research, trying to figure out some species and really get some great, like, sharp, good shots. Um, so I'll, I'll be definitely, that's pretty much all I'm going to focus on in the spring, I think. Um, and I'm going to continue, I'm going to p- probably vlog that, do maybe a YouTube series or something. So I'm cool. going to really try to do the weekly YouTube videos again. Um, you know, filmed one earlier today, filmed one yesterday. So I uh, expect those. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much my personal goals. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Then the podcast, what would you say? We've got a lot going on, I think. Yeah, so uh, first of all, both of the lenses we're filming on are Laowa lenses. Uh, Ryan's got a wide angle on his, and then a, a macro 100mm uh, on the R5 there. Um, and we were sent those uh, by Laowa, and in a couple months, or maybe a month or so, uh, we're going to have the Lau guy on, and we're going to talk about the lenses. Uh, Steven, uh, we're going to have him on and talk about the lenses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that'll be cool. And yeah, uh, as we announced at the end of this year, we're, we're, we're working more with Hunt's photo and video and mm-hmm. uh, more directly Gary. Um, he's been helping us. He's been working with Henry a while, uh, more recently me. But uh, he's collectively doing for both of us for the show as a whole and uh, getting us more guests, as we've talked about. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, we're basically going to be growing the show in a lot more ways, uh, yep. reaching a wider audience, mm-hmm. more guests. Working um, with brands. Yeah. Working with brands, mm-hmm. getting more gear, the tryouts, um, and yeah, I'm just I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to it. Just meeting more people, I think, more networking, and just more opportunities, yeah. really. And um, like experiences like today, where you met, I mean, I you already kind of knew them, but you kind of grew that bond, and you know, we might have them on the podcast, something like that, and kind of yeah. expanding the networking. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh just a couple plugs on at the end here. We still have our Patreon. Um, you get access to a Discord server, all kinds of benefits. Um, yeah, we continue to run that if we get patrons, so, uh, you know, kind of go into that. Uh, we got our clips still going on, three clips a week, um, so if you can't catch the entire podcast, watch a couple clips. I mean, I try to find kind of the best moments there, um, so, yeah, check those out, and, uh, yeah, anything else with that? No, I mean, I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. I think we're yeah. going to hit the ball rolling, uh, it's going to be great. I think this is a great episode to start out with, kind of this in-person, in the field, I'm sure we'll do it again. Who knows when, but at some point. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Might even do some meetups. Yeah. We'll see. Fan meetups. Maybe yeah. a local meetup. I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I know a lot of people around here. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Woo. That was good. Thank you so much for watching the Owl Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.